Yo, 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 testing, testing. What's going on, guys? What is going on? Let me test out this live stream. So tonight, I just want to test out this live stream, see how I've been doing um, a live stream retouch. And um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. All right, let me see. I can figure out if I can hear myself. So how it sounds. Test one, test two. All right. All right, testing, testing, testing. I think that sounds pretty good. All right, so tonight, um, as you can see on the thumbnail, let me turn this down. This music still playing. All right, as you can see in the thumbnail, um, I just want to do some retouching tonight and I want to kind of get you guys input on what would you want to see be retouched. All right. Let me move back. All right. So um, until uh, I see some people jump on, I think I'm going to just share a screen and just dive right into it. And I'm going to just pick some old photos that I've shot of some um, models. Uh, the first folder I went to was a folder of some girls I shot back in Philly. And uh, just tested this out. So let me see something right quick. She share screen. All right. All right, so as you can see, I have the screen up right here, right? Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of people like to use Photoshop Camera Raw. That was my go-to when I first started um, in photography and whatnot. But I love Capture One. It's better. I love the layout. It looks more cooler. I think it's more powerful when it comes to pulling certain hues and colors. So that's what I'm going to stick with. So I think I'm going to just scroll through here and look for an image that I might want to start off with. A lot of different images, as you can see. You know, I, I would see a lot of guys in the group, uh, as a um, Facebook group I'm in, black photographers are always asking for like retouching tutorials. And I keep forgetting I'm sitting on so many images that I've shot in the past. You know, I just have to find time to sit down and kind of get my, get my feet wet I'm always doing something. So that's my goal this year. I, like I love teaching and I want to, it's a lot of different shots. I'm just scrolling. I'm just trying to see. I know a lot of people are like, why do you shoot so much? Why do you take so many shots? I know a lot of photographers, they like to just try to focus on one or two shots and they just want to get that done. But I like to have options, not just for like stocks, but I might have some cool ideas. Um, this girl was young. She was a great model. And I think she was nervous, but she pulled off the shots. Good direction. You could get them to do what you need. Also, with um, good conversation between the hairstylists and whatnot. Are you barbers out there looking to up your portfolio? You need to give me a call. I'll come in there and set up and I'll shoot for you. And these aren't even retouched. These are just like raw images. So... You could just imagine if we go in there and clean it up. Matter of fact, let's go in and clean up one of these right here. I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to go to my basics, which would be, you know, just checking the white balance or whatnot. 
I would usually just do automatic white balance, but let me just tap in here. You know what? That pulled pretty good, but let me see something right quick. If you just click on this right here, they'll say auto, which was a little oranger. I remember that because I think I was shooting with a uh, a, a beauty dish with a white um, lining in the inside instead of a silver. But I think I like the cool, so I'm going to pull this down a little bit, not too much. Probably about right there, so I can still see some red in the skin. All right. And next, I'll go over to this folder right here. And I usually do an auto exposure, but um, I kind of see what I want to work on, which is mostly the highlights. If you want to know what I shot this with, I shot this with a, I think, Canon R. Um, what is it? Canon Mark III, I think. And I probably was shooting with an 85. Where's my um I know I was in the right spot. Give me one second. I'm trying to find um my specs. Is it this one? Uh, I don't see it. It's kind of weird. Maybe I'm not clicking on it. I was trying to sign, but yeah, I think I shot this with a Canon Mark III. And I probably either used a hundred millimeter or eighty-five because this is like really sharp, and I don't think my fifty was strong enough to pull this. So I'm pretty sure I was shooting with either a hundred mac millimeter macro or fifty. But let us continue. Let me go back to this folder here. I really just want to focus on pulling down some of these highlights. Pull it down just a little about right there. And probably lift the shadows just a little bit. Or, you know, matter of fact, let me double click on that. Let me just lift the blacks just a little bit. About right there. All right. And let me pull the shadows down just a tad. And that's where we're going to start at right there. All right. Let me just check something over here. One second. All right. We're still connected. Yes, yeah, this is new to me. <laughs> I like to add the structure, maybe like maybe around two or three, just to give it a little bump up in the texture. If you want to see what that does, you pull it down and see how soft it makes it and how strong. I don't like to make it too strong, but I don't like to pull. Um, I don't like to pull in my images with like super sharp. I like to do all that at the end to enhance the photo. So I don't want my image too dull, but I want it sharp enough that I can work with the texture. I think that's good. Here's what I right click on that, hit edit with, and I just go to Photoshop. Then we're going to just open that up in Photoshop at 300 resolution, 100%. I will go on 16 bit if it was like commercial, but I'm going to just stick with eight for these purposes right here. We're going to pull that into Photoshop and then we're going to get, um, we're going to get it cracking. But, yep, we're going to get it cracking. See something here. I wonder if this is showing on my Facebook. I'm trying to get into doing more of these since a lot of people are asking for them. Plus, it helps me. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right. Guys, give me a second. I'm going to pull up this other screen. All right. So here we go. And what I like to use, I like to use a Wacom tablet. It gives me uh, more flexibility. It feels like I'm using uh, a pen or a pencil. Compared to using a mouse, which sucks. But I like to keep my mouse handy because you never know. I might have to break out the pen tool and get busy with it. All right. So let me hide this. A couple of things I like to do. First off, I like to control J. And I like to always duplicate my layer. Always make a duplicate there just for backup. You don't want to just jump in there and um, start working on your original image and mess it up. 
and then you can't go back and fix it later so we're gonna jump in here we're gonna create a, a new layer and what i like to do is like the cleanup routine i like to grab my healing brush and the first thing i like to do is this correct healing brush spot healing healing brush tool adobe just did an update so i'm not sure um what's going on every time i come on here it's something different i don't <laughs> and i don't know what what goes on until i'm like on youtube one day and i'm like seeing somebody posting tutorial tutorial talking about this is what's new in photoshop's update so let me make sure i have the correct spot healing brush as i open one of my energy drinks and what we're going to do is we're going to go in close yeah i think i grabbed the wrong one it's probably this one And you guys can see those little stray hairs. Let me see if I can zoom in. You guys see these little stray hairs right there? I like to get rid of those. So what we want to do is get in here with the healing brush and always look at the outside of the texture because if it's hard, you don't want the brush to be too soft. So I'll probably put this one probably around like 85. I already had it set. And um, you just want to paint it out. You want to get rid of it. And you want to go around the skin and just kind of slowly remove stuff that you don't want. You know, go ahead and get rid of those. Clean up the little pores just like that. It's kind of driving out no music. I want to stream with y'all let you play music. I want to look down, but I'm kind of in motion right now. So hopefully if some people jump on, y'all can uh, let me know what we can work on next. But I'm, I'm going to just keep going around, cleaning up these little pieces of hair I don't want. And clean it up. You you and people ask like why you gotta do all this stuff right here, you know it's not. I mean honestly, like if you were selling these images to like a company, um, or you just wanna, if I was a barber and I want to hang up images in my um barber shop, or a cosmo, you know cosmetologist want to hang up images in their salon, I would want my images looking good on a, you know if it's on the poster. I mean if it's your work, I mean you would wanna you know put the work in right, to um. To get the best or get the best retoucher or somebody a photographer who's going to clean up your image to the point yeah give me a second i don't know if my computer is moving here we go i just want to try to see the uh, before and after Let's see before and after see all that loose hair we kind of got rid of now these scars and all that little small look that stuff we'll we worry about later that just we're not going to focus on that let me see if i can get some um some uh let me see here click on play uh let me see here let me see let me see let me see all right okay try to check the volume I see how loud the music is. <laughs> it's a delay though. But that's good. I could dig it. I could dig that. Alright, so um moving along, moving along, moving along. Let's get back into the skin. We're gonna jump around here and clean that up, clean that up. And this is a tedious job, you know, I always see people always want to ask about retouching and everyone's always trying to find an easy way out. I mean, they they do have a couple of plugins I'm going to cover in a tutorial on another day that can do um, some pretty decent things, um, depending on the job. I would just say every plugin isn't for, you know, it's not you're not going to find something that's going to have a 100 percent solution for everything you want. Uh, I believe at some point you have to get your hands dirty. 
now if it's for like um uh social media or something like that i get it if you just want a, a quick plug-in or something to drop some images online for like content that's one thing but um being the type of person i am i like to always work on my images as if it's going to be for like a huge client uh the bigger the better excuse me because it kind of uh forced me to polish my work because every job it'll feel like you know as for money even if it's just for like um you know a personal project you don't want to treat everyone as is so that's a lot of stuff i have i haven't even put out because uh you'll sit back and look at it like man i don't like this i don't like this or you're like i'll come back and revisit this you know and before you can come back and revisit it you know another brilliant idea comes up and you're like oh i want to do this so i think some of the best creators are the ones who actually have teams and um truth be told i, I used to think that i could do everything by myself but the, the more work i started putting out over the last few years the, the more i start realizing you know i really need a team because you know projects get bigger ideas get wilder you know dreams come bigger visions become like more vivid and it's just like okay i can't do all this myself i mean it's just like impossible you got to get some type of people that's going to be there to support you you know in whatever uh field you're in to not only like free you up to do other stuff but um um speed up the process that's if you want to stay on top of things you know like even like hair over here a little piece of hair there i could probably just hit j and get the patch tool and just drag that out like that and i think i'm gonna just clone stamp this piece out okay no i don't want current anymore. i'll just do the top one So when it kind of retouching, like some of the tools you're really gonna just be familiar with are like the clone stamp tool, the healing brush tool, the patch tool. That's kind of why they have them so close together because when it comes to retouching, those are like, like three of the main tools you're always gonna go to before you start like dodging and burning, which you will kind of see like, you see how the barber has like the chalk line going around so he can keep his edge straight. You know, some people just post that online. They won't even go in there and just like retouch that out. I don't know why but i mean if i'm a barber i want all my looks to look good you know but i mean i guess i don't maybe that's a i don't i don't maybe if a barber on here chime in and let me know uh is y'all cool with y'all people walking out the chair like that and this is a photo shoot and i'm not talking about the home he did a great job on his hair but I'm, I'm just trying to make a point when it comes to because and i'm saying that as in as saying i never posted any of his images out online with that line on it like that I retouched all of them if i did post any i think i got like two on my instagram but all i'm saying is there are people out there who would take that but oh that's fine and just post it online they won't be like you know what i'm gonna just go pay somebody to retouch it and clean it up for me so i could put my best work out there so it's, it's two it's, it's two different mindsets i've learned in this um business when it comes to um imagery and you're gonna have people who want quality um and it's just gonna be some people who just don't care they're just like you know what just um give me what i got i mean what, what i paid for and i'm gonna just put it out there so just clean this up up here little hairs oh that's cool i guess i get this little one right here so yep it's a tedious process i think that's what what i'm gonna do with just this guy right here it just probably do a cleanup and then on another one we'll do a dodge and burn where we revisit it but you can see this right here the tape line we could probably draw that back in later yep we do barbering too <laughs> we do barbering too i'm not gonna heal too much of this because i want to keep we'll remove all that texture i want to keep some of it natural so what i'll probably do is just dodge and burn those in and it's little spots here it's a lot of tedious work you know i have some guys like man will man you be shooting all them fine girls man this is that like look dude 
everybody get the same retouch treatment so don't don't let the social media hype you know fool you man it's, it's a lot of post-production work going in some of these images but now it's so bad now it's like everyone's like getting into the app business really it's ai i think i mean you know i i i, I use the instagram story filter for the first time um the other night and it was like a uh it was like a mr grinch it was like a, a mr grinch um face and it was just like all green and it had my hair up and i couldn't believe it i was like what is this i look like that dude right over there and i just couldn't imagine i just couldn't it was just, it just blew my mind i was like man i actually look like the grinch and it was kind of scary too because i was like yo if um if they got technology this this is advanced man that can recognize your facial features and put uh some type of overlay where there's a texture of something over your face just off of the the camera lens of your phone what else can they do hmm. i don't want to say it's scary scary but it's just like yo i mean think about that it's like really crazy you know having something like that advanced and that's where everything's going out with these filters so i mean a lot of chicks and i'm saying chicks i'm not trying to be discriminative but i mean the majority of pictures when it comes to like instagram posts are like filter based and uh but women are the ones that use filter based applications the most that's what i'm trying to say you don't see too many dudes on there time out i just took a picture you know what? hold on let me go um, use a filter to clean it up they're just gonna post it you know men are more rugged i get it and women are more feminine even though i want to look my best i get it but i believe if you if you're really trying to um you know i'm gonna stay off that topic let me get back in my retouch <laughs> uh i don't want to get too political and nothing like that right now um i'm gonna finish cleaning up this dude's face we don't have that much left honestly i think maybe some around the ear you want to get all that clean up in there I think it was a football game on the day. I didn't get a chance to catch it. I was scheduling post for the week. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, scheduling post for the week. And if there's anyone out there who needs a, uh, oh, excuse me, energy drink, uh, social media manager, contact me. Or if you need someone to help you with um, your content, let me know but hey this is a lot of cleanup work so everybody like man why don't you come out there it's right there you always busy this and this and this i'm doing stuff like this this is what i'm sitting at the computer doing <laughs> so i'm like i'm kind of uh tied up you know and, and the smart thing is which was close back to my conversation about having a a, a, a team of people is that um it helps you free up time so you can go work on something else and the more clientele you could bring in that's more revenue and with more revenue you could outsource these jobs to someone else to do them you know or build your own ecosystem and just have you know book your own people to take care of the job for you but either way you want to free up your time you don't want to be sitting here doing this But you don't i don't complain though you know it keeps me busy and at the end of the day i like doing what i do you know so no complaints here but it's a lot of cleanup work and yes i do this with the clothes but going back to and i know I, this, this much but i'm gonna be preaching about tonight is team because on photo shoots it's, it's, and, and, and this is to go out to a lot of people out here and I want to say civilian, but I, this ain't, I'm not military, but it kind of feels like that in this conversation. 
and and I mean civilian as as in clients, I guess people who pay us to do this type of stuff. <laughs> when they say, "Why well, I have to pay for makeup artist, hairstylist, wardrobe assistant, assistant, this, this, and this, and this," because when you have people on your team to knock out the stuff in advance, you won't have to pay people that much money in post production. Like if I had someone on set with like a lint roller, like a, a stylist, or if I had me an assistant stylist that that was always standing next to me or standing next to like a few feet from the model watching him or her looking at the clothes all the time and um monitoring everything you know they can pick up on that stuff they'll see it they'll be able to walk up on it and they'll be able to spot it they'll be able to walk up on it they'll be able to spot it use the lint roller clean it up you know like if you see the before and after like like you see after i mean after and before after before a lot of cleanup but it looks 10 times better and a lot of people like i said a lot of people don't do that much work but i always you know do this much detailed work because i'm treating this as if i was sending this to you know someone who's really going to be spending some dough and if this was like a, a client for like, say for instance, this shirt is like a Tommy Hill figure shirt or something or somebody for like, just, uh, just some random brand, you know, you don't want to send it with like all the stuff on their clothes. They might want to blow this image up and put it on a billboard somewhere on um, Times Square and or on the side of a building. And when it's intensified as far as in that size, you know you're going to see every little small detail when you're walking by you know down the street and this stuff sticks out so the more detail work you put in the more confidence you have in like you know getting the best quality image that you pay for it's a lot of work yes but, but a lot of this right here can be avoided like i said if you have a lot of people on team i want to say a lot of people but pe the right people on team to help you do this because as a photographer i think about doing this while i'm on set you know walking by and um walking by my uh model and you know checking for things like that but i mean i'm trying to focus on lighting my aperture everything like that i'm trying to make sure everything looks good and in order to make sure my images are going to be lit I had to speed this up go in juice mode right quick once you train your eye your eye will just jump and just start seeing every little detail but this is like the first thing i like to do before I, I do anything else i like to walk around the image and look for little signs of anything i need to clean up and then i go and clean it up so One day I'll amass a, a size following and I can sit and talk to people in here. Somebody named, is it PM? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a spam bot or something. I don't even know if that's a real name. Somebody just left a comment. But look at that. Clean up work, man. Look at that. Let me zoom out see how much work I done did. Yep. nice little cleanup but that's what you want to do first mm. let's go around it's hot up in here i got lights everywhere in here let's go around clean up the image and uh let me click on this right quick See all this before and after. See that? All the stuff we cleaned up. So I see a lot of people in uh, the group that I posted in this black photography group. When it comes to cleanup, they just think, you know, you're supposed to just like frequency separation, everything. And it's like, no, you don't want to do that. Even I could have did that to an extent with these clothes. 
and you know and, and just made everything black with frequency separation but look look how better it looks when you spend a type of time to clean that type of stuff up let me zoom in so um you can see it a little better all right so yeah just like the before you can see all that lint just on its clothes just disappear it's a lot of cleanup work and it just take a little time you know but you just got to do it see that all right Woo. Mm. so trying to see if i could get some people on here let me know if y'all want to retouch um something different creative uh you want, you want me uh to keep going on with this guy's face do a little dodge and burn i think i might do that Let me see YouTube live. Whoa, what time is it? 9 44. All right, let's keep getting at it, man. All right, so we're gonna what we're gonna do about this white line around his beard? What's the easiest way? Since we talking about frequency separation, we could do that, or we could just do a clone and stamp tool, and let's try diff let's try a few different things. So let's uh let's name this layer. Let's name this layer. Uh, skin yield layer control j we're going to duplicate that and this is going to be beard line up like i said we always want to back up our layers all right i don't want to mess up nothing then we can't get back to it so let's do a skin line up and i'm gonna try something i never tried before that i just thought about i'm gonna try to do i'm gonna try to use a pen tool and i'm gonna draw around the skin the area where I want it to be removed. Let me see. What, let me see something right quick. I think my screen moving slow. Let me jump back out. Boom, boom. And I'm gonna just draw around the uh, area that I want. Let me see something. all right <clears throat> i'm gonna make a selection and um, let's do three by three average why why did it go to the eye drop tool i don't want to do that oh i see this over here 0.5 pixels let's do that and what I want to do with that being selected, I want to just go to my patch tool and I'm going to grab this and just slide it over to, let's go to the, <coughs> excuse me, let's go to the right first. See what happens if we just sample some of the skin. I mean, the hair, that didn't work. Let's go back. So let's go to the left. Smidge it more. One more time. Excuse me, didn't work. I got some water.
All right. So, I don't think this is going to work. Not sampling, right? So, that idea is not going to work. Let me deselect that. Let me go back one more time. So, how else can we get rid of that white line? <clears throat> Let's see. Get rid of that path too. Let's create a blank layer. And let's get a uh, clone and stamp tool. And we're going to clone and stamp the current layer, which is layer one. And the below layer, which is the beer line layer. All right. <clears throat> and we want the hardness to kind of be around 70, 80% because, yeah, let's do about around 60. All right. Let's get a smaller brush. Keep the hardness right there. And we're going to just hold down Alt Control if you're on the Mac and sample the texture of the skin right next to the line. And you want to just paint that out. So let's see if we can do that. Let's zoom in right quick. You know what? I'm going to jump back out. Try that one more time. I think it's a delay in my system. Because it's not letting me sample... There we go. Let me click on that. And there we go. I'm going to paint that out. And basically what it's doing is just sampling the skin on the left. Let me see how that looks. I got to remember to make sure that man line stay straight though. You don't want to mess the line up. So you might have to zoom out. Let me see how that look before and after. Yeah, I want to push this line back. You know what I'm talking about? I have some of y'all bothers to be doing. But <clears throat> I do want to remove it. So let me think. If we want to get the skin and push it back, how bad would it be if I push it back just a smidge? I don't even want to do them like that because the line is right there. So in order to get rid of that white, we we'll probably have to either paint it brown or... This is gonna be interesting. You know, I'm about to I'm about to learn something new as I do this. Let me see. <clears throat> Let me see. So I'm thinking colorize. Maybe let's do that. Let's try that. Let's go to hmm. Let's go to solid color, maybe. No, I don't want to do that. You know what? Might have to do frequency separation. Let's just try that. Let's go to beard lineup. Yeah, I'm gonna just run the action. I got off on this beauty retouch panel, and uh, I'm gonna just go to eight bit. This is probably the only time I'll do something like this. I, I, I used to use frequency separation when I when I first started retouching. And then um, I wanted myself to look better, so I started doing dodge and burn. So I see a lot of people, this is the first thing they go to, and they just start blurring the skin. It's like, no. <clears throat> and I can say that wholeheartedly because that's what I used to do like when I first started. And I was like, you know what? You're losing all the texture. You know, you're taking away from all the skin. And you know it's just it's, it's just doing too much, so um, want to kind of stay away from that. So what I'm gonna do here <clears throat> is you want to kind of get it the blur to the point where you can kind of paint that section out. I want to kind of blur my a little more so I can get that erase that white line period there we go i kind of like mine like that 
and that's going to be on a low frequency layer that's just a uh, color tone like you don't see that white line no more i still got the high frequency layer but now i could i got a blank layer i'm either going to paint on the blank layer or i could use this layer and kind of brush it over to kind of add more to, but this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go down to this correct tone layer and i'm gonna get a brush <clears throat> probably uh, a flow of maybe five and i'm going to sample areas and paint over that white let me see what it does sample this let me see if that makes a difference probably not i'm not sure let me just take this off what i'm thinking is i'm thinking the texture may be too too high and i just got to get rid of that white i'm gonna have to just remove that texture that's that's the only way i can see it being done so you know what i'm gonna just ditch this whole frequency separation layer which is what i want to do anyway because i hate doing it <clears throat> and i'm gonna just get a uh a chrome stamp tool and I'm, I'm gonna get in here and get busy like that i'm gonna just get a smaller brush amp up the texture just a little bit like that and i'm, I'm gonna come in close and sample and i'm gonna just paint out the areas i don't want all right photoshop tripping all right we're gonna add it there there we go let's paint that out just go in there just like that. And just keep going. Let me shut down my capture one. I'm trying to figure out why it's a slow, slow buffer. Maybe it's because it's going live. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to drop the brush size down just a little more. And I'm going to increase my flow to 100. I don't know why it's at 68. And I'm just basically putting my brush over the, the white spots. It's almost like I'm doing like a little dab with the brush. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing a full stroke. Just like a little dab, just hitting the spots nice and soft. Because that's really the spots that are sticking out anyway. And that's the spots I want going. So it's like little dab, little dab, little dab. I'm hitting it like this, you know. One second, I'm trying to close this program. No, it's... Yeah, I might have to restart the Photoshop layer in a second after I close this capture one. But as you can see, little dab, little dab, little dabs, little dabs. Let's see how it looks over there. But you see that line cleaning up, though. You don't see them, no, no little white spots. You see, that looks way better. But I got to go ahead and fix some stuff because I see where... Um, the clone stamp might have had cloned something because it was buffering or something like that. So I need to go in and give me one second. Here we go. All right. While I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this little hair too because it's just I'm sitting here looking at it. All right. And we'll go back and add some texture. I'm going to go back and fill that little soft spot right there. Remove that. Scroll on down, do a little more dabs, get this little white piece right here. This one, bop, 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 boom. Just get all that little chalk out the way. <clears throat> that should look good. That should look good. 
I got to find out how to cut the settings off on this um, from Facebook business. It keeps sending me updates as if I'm asking for them. All right. So you guys see that? Matter of fact, let me save this too. Because if I do all this work and it just, this computer crash, I'm going to be like super hot. Always save your work. Always save your work, man. Beer game, beer game. All right. That's a nice little cleanup, though, man. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. I didn't push this line back. So let's see, like before and after. You see that? Zoom in. This is before. And then when you're going to do the small cleanup with this, uh, nice little cleanup. You're not pushing it back too far. And I could live with that, you know. Let me go, let me zoom, go all the way out. I probably could go in there and darken it a little more. I might do that when I do the uh, dodge and burn. Just like right around the edge. But you don't want to do too much and take away from, from the, from the uh, creativity of the barber. Or the stylist, for that matter. You want, you want to kind of keep that, you know, that original sauce that they put into that, that look. You know what I mean? So... I'm gonna name this uh, clone mine. All right, now I'm gonna just make a, a complete image stamp of the whole image again. Let me save that one more time. <clears throat> Next, really, we just gotta do like a little quick little dodge and burn. And uh, the image is good, man. You know, always gotta jump in there and do a little dodge and burn. So I'm gonna do a hmm. I guess I do a dodge and burn curve setup. I'll click on that. Hmm. Did I click on it? There we go. I didn't click on it. All right, so with this gray layers, black and white layers, I like to, to duplicate those to make it darker. Or what I would do, I just take the one that already uh, opens up when you uh, hit the action, and I just take the blending mode and turn, turn it from normal to like multiply so I can see it extra dark. Make sure you guys can see this. <clears throat> see how dark that is now i can see everything that i want to work on on a more detailed level and i like to do micro first but i'm gonna do global first and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go uh to this dodge and burn folder and i'm gonna select the brush and go down to like three percent Make sure my brush is soft. Yeah, I'm gonna do a global, global dodge burn, meaning, you know, looking at it from a, a global perspective. I'm not gonna zoom in like super close and, and do a micro one. But I'm gonna start off with the curves for uh, first, which is the uh, highlights. And I'm gonna probably raise that brush up just a little bit. And I'm just go for the areas that I want to want to dodge out. Basically, what you're doing is you 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 you're blending the uh, you're blending the tones of the skin. Like where some areas are dark, you want bright, and some areas are bright, you want dark. And this is how you don't end up with an image, you know, that's all super blurry, and you know it looks like someone uh just completely blurred out the image and it looks like they someone has like a filter on it went, oh that's photoshop that's some images people be talking about oh man that's photoshop i mean of course everything is photoshop man people been you know editing images for like companies for years i'm like get over it it just adds to the point now that you know people overuse it so much on images like on social media it's just like everything looks like super fake 
so and it's because people want microwave stuff you know people don't want to sit down and do this right here because it takes too much time but these are the images that come out with the best results you have to sit down and you have to put the work in it or just pay somebody to do it but as far as a photographer i mean if you're going to call yourself a, a, a well round photographer or someone who's out here actually you know putting in the work you know your images have to you know match what you're what you're saying out here in these streets so that you know i just want to go do a global i'm gonna switch over i'm gonna do a burn and i'm gonna fill in some of the spots i want to burn in which means making it make it darker and you want to be nice and gentle and soft you know that's why i got the the flow at three percent right now i want to go a hundred percent and um and it's it, the brush is too hard and I'm basically just burning the areas that are like too light that i don't want to see i guess and we go back to dodge like i said you want to switch between both because you don't want to stay on one and then when you zoom out the image you don't change the structure of the person's face you know they went from looking like uh jacob phillips to jacob phillips the third just calling out a random name i don't know anybody named jacob phillips but i always like i said i always turn the blending mode to multiply so i can see it at a real darker level but then i'll put it back at normal so i can see it you know differently but yeah i'm just dodging out all those shadows trying to get a nice even blend all right just a little on the on the tip of the nose up here and the reason i'm doing this at a global scale right now is that so i can see everything from a distance then if it looks good from a distance you know once we do a, another dodge or burn we'll we'll go closer and do a micro which will be you know kind of zoomed in but there we go just like that all right now i'm uh going that layer and i'm gonna go to normal all right you always see the before and after so it's like set you said we clean the skin up like that skin texture still intact it's like before and after it's real subtle but you can still see the skin texture you know what i mean you don't want to be, you know, here overdoing everything that, you know, you just take away from the whole image. So <clears throat> with the visual aid and normal, now I'm going to go and uh, do the exact same thing from a global scale. And I'm going to go back to Dodge. Start off with that first. We work on the forehead just a little bit. You know, real nice and subtle. You don't want to just sit there and brush it like, you know, like a two-year-old painting all over a paper. A pa piece of paper you want to have a nice you know soft stroke be real gentle and uh take your time this right here is like really training your eye you know and it's teaching you how to paint as well that's basically what you're doing you're, you're painting your you know your subject right there boom boom right there on the head be training your eye as well. I forgot about that. That's one of the main important things. Really training your eye. Right up under the cheek, right there. Soft, soft. Right there, and I see a little bit right there on the chin. Right there on the neck. Boom. Boom. Boom like right there now i'm gonna switch over to burn burn some of these brighter areas like i say we just we want to do a good job of blending the skin the skin tone without you know using like a blurry filter or frequency separation and you know it looks like the whole image is is like blurred this is almost kind of like what a makeup artist would do as far as like let me see me draw that line there there too so I'm painting that the rest of that the hairline with the burn. Just make that a little darker. 
feel that in. You see the before and after on that. Yeah, nice, just nice subtle touch. Paint that line in right there. Like I said, I want to go around that line where uh, we retouched earlier and just fill in the rest of the then we a little dark spot right there. All around that line right there. Just darken it in just a little bit where that white line was at. And we go back to the skin, finish burning right there. Sometimes it's good to leave some of these uh these little I don't, I don't want to call them pimples, but they just you know your skin you want to kind of make it look a little natural you know especially with the men i mean i can understand with the ladies but you know the men could be a little rough sometimes i gotta go back here, down here work on that on the micro level too let's see something um <clears throat> you know i seen some guys like how, how much retouch you gotta do with the men i mean you you, you want to clean it up but you want to get to the point where it's like yeah they're looking like um you know what's one of the guys from off the um, i don't want to say looney tunes but one of those guys that, that's riding on the horse to go um to see uh to say some damsel or something ha ha you know and you know some, some some little white little suit and they're just riding to go say some damsel you know you don't want you want the skin so super clean with dudes i mean that's just me that's my personal thing i mean if it was for now if a client asks you to do that anyway it's the skin dermatology click cream you know for the, the the bags under your eyes and all that and they want all that hey you do it you know they get a piece of pay job but it just depends you know on who is for who is for and like how much work they want done for the face you got to talk to your client they gotta let you know i mean you just don't want to just jump in there you know that's why you show them different samples of work always try to keep you a mood boy you know go on pinterest or something uh um gq uh esquire or the gentleman quarterly you know go find you know some images with men or go google men uh skincare products and and see how photographers that shoot for these companies and look at the men and see how they uh retouch their pictures and look at their skin texture and kind of go look at your work and like, okay this is what i need to work on and maybe i need to focus on that maybe i need to focus on this you know so i always keep that in mind <clears throat> nothing wrong with looking at uh mm, references I always want to keep some references so you can uh stay relevant you know because you, you don't want to reinvent the wheel i mean if it's, it's if it's already a way out there and uh, of stuff getting done especially if you're trying to get jobs in that field you know make sure your work is looking the same or better there we go go back to my dodge there we, i mean my um i'm on my burn app i might go back to my dodge right there almost ready to jump into this micro boom so before after get that line cleaned up all right so i like that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um i think i'm gonna duplicate these Yeah, I'm gonna name this micro and I'm gonna name this global. All right, I'm gonna cut my visual aid back on and I'm gonna turn my visual aid to multiply again. Now with micro, you can dig in a little deeper. You could get in a little closer and uh, do some more detail work. Now you can focus for those little, those little smaller, um, little small little bumps on the skin. You could do a little more detailed micro work on those. You don't want to erase them, uh, you know, to the point that it's like okay, it, the skin looks so fake. 
So what you want to do is you just want to dodge and burn them. So let's go to dodge. <clears throat> and I'm going to just work around the corner of those little skin texture bumps. You know, kind of with the dodge, I'm just kind of going to kind of like lift the shadows up so it doesn't look like you could you could tell it's harsh light, but you want to um, you don't want it too harsh. Well, it's harsh light and it makes the shot look good. What I'm trying to say is that if someone has skin texture on their face or they have bumps or whatever because it's sticking out of the skin, if the light is hitting down, I gotta explain that. Let me see. So, like I have a a, a light over me right now. Okay, so if I turn it on, let's see. So, <clears throat> I have a, he a headlight over me, right? So I cut that on. You see how that light just pops up just like that? That's basically how I shot this guy, right? So I shot him with a beauty dish. And it, the dish is pointing down right over your face. So anything that sticks out like these bags under my eyes, because it's sticking out of my skin, it's going to be a shadow under it. Now, if it's just a light pointing towards me, like my key light, you know, it's going to be a little softer. And it's going to be a little more flattering but this is shot with a harder light because it's you know it's a man you know with women i usually use softer light you know bigger um soft boxes and stuff like that because it's more flattering and you don't want to be doing that much retouching on a female anyway you know that's the makeup job makeup artist job to make sure that's taken care of so uh you don't want to be spending too much time in here doing it but you don't man it doesn't take that long as long as they got good skin you know and the, the haircut's clean it's cool everybody understands it's a dude but women you know it's, it's just a beauty standard that's how it is so <clears throat> i always people see people complaining Ooh, standards it's a standard don't complain about it i mean just get it fixed you know so don't complain about it uh i'm gonna go in closer let me make sure my brush is soft yep and i'm gonna work right up under these shadows and try to you know lift that up a little bit that way it doesn't look so hard to zoom out too so I can see it a little closer. All right. And there's little gaps here. And this right here is really like the best way in my opinion to really like get your, you know, when it comes to dodge and burn and skin, skin retouching. I used to think it was frequency separation when I first started, you know, you know, that was hot at the moment, but it was, you had to know what you really were doing when it came to like skin tones and making sure you're not altering the image. And I go back and look at a lot of my early work, you know, I sit down and I, I, I ask myself like, man, why did I post that? But in your mind, you know, you think that looks good, you know? You learn and you learn and you learn the more and more you do it. So like I'm always shooting and I'm always trying to sharpen my skill set. And that's how you get better. You see it before and after. See it before, after. I'm gonna do maybe a few more and I'm gonna jump over it to dodge right quick. This is a really darker one right here. Just knock that out. This one here. So it's like I said, it's a lot of tedious work. Boom, knock that one out. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to retouch some other stuff, man, but I didn't see anybody um, hop on and I throw out any su suggestions, I guess. And this is new territory. I know most people, you know, not going to sit in jump on a live and try to learn that like this unless um it's like popular so that's what i'm trying to do is uh because there are people out here that do this but they're not of this skin color <laughs> so i mean if I, i'm pretty sure if i was dropping a drama channel or something like that or some uh what's the popular podcast that mostly african americans do it's not this, I know for sure. But I just said this is very therapeutic. Maybe on my next few, I'll, I'll be a little more looser. It'll be more of a 
podcast feel for me. I don't say podcast, but more of a, like a, I say podcast is talking to like a radio type style. I'm just running my mouth and I'm rambling. Trying to get through this. Let me switch over to burn. Now I'm going to go work on these darker tones. Oh, I ain't got the screen up. My bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. I'm over here working and stuff. Boom. Let me go to burn. Now I'm going to go fill it and knock out some of these, you know, these highlights in some of these areas on these bumps that, you know, sticking out. Darker nose. Like I say, you want to even the skin tone. So you see these highlights that are popping out. Just tone those down a little bit. Right there. This one. Um, um. It's really a song. That's the song and dance going back and forth. You know, working on the highlights, working on the lows. Wow, this one right here really sticking out. I might have to just go in there and just remove that one. All right, so let me turn this to normal. See this one right here sticking out right here? You know, I might just go and patch tool that baby away. And no, I'm not going to do that. Hey, I saw how it blurred it. I don't like it. Let me go back up here to micro. Let me go grab my brush. And I'm going to um, do what I've been doing. Like I said, once you start seeing, once you start moving stuff, you start seeing the skin getting blurry, you're doing something wrong. Especially when, it, when it, if what you was moving had texture in it and you just like went and moved it or you just did something you like, I don't care. It just looks better. Well, what looks better in your eyes might not look better in everyone else's eyes. I would say that. And I would say, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're, if you're prepared to post your work online, be prepared for criticism. I'll say that again. If, if you're prepared to post your work online, be prepared for criticism. I mean, that's what that's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So you, you can't post your stuff online. And then when people come on there talking about it, you, you all cry baby about it. You, you gave it to the public. You know, understand that people can criticize your stuff, especially if there's like a standard. I mean, if you're in a certain field or a certain market and you're posting your stuff out there, I mean, that's like, um, you know, how people say, oh, them fighting words. I'm like, them competition words. You putting your stuff out there. And you say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to compete with everyone else out there. You know, you can't, you can't lie to yourself. and be like, oh, I'm just doing this for fun. I'll just they kill time all right well cool but that's what you believe but um make sure i save this right quick that's all i'm saying if you're gonna put your work out there be prepared to be criticized because um people will voice their opinion at the end of the day you can't do nothing about that Oh, it's already saving. Also, if you're going, you know, um, if you're going to give your critique, uh, your feedback on somebody's work or something you see online, um, make sure you have some work to back it up to prove that, you know, you can speak on those topics of those matters. Because if not, you know, it's like today, everybody is a know it all. And then when you, when you go try to go look for their work or see what they, you know, they're backing up what they're saying. You don't see anything. A lot of capping going on, man. A lot of capping going on. Work on these little areas here. Get 
and I could come back in here. I could do another time stamp layer, come back in here, remove this little hair, maybe move this texture right here. I'll see. That might be like a final walkthrough, you know. so cold outside this weekend what y'all do this what y'all do this weekend y'all stay in the house i see everybody on the news keep preaching um don't be driving don't be driving don't be driving okay it wasn't that bad i heard a lot of people got some snow though so if you got some snow hope you went shopping beforehand I see a lot of shelves out there empty too, so I oh, gotta get that supply chain thing fixed, man, so I can get some more food on the shelves. All right, we're gonna do too much more. I'm gonna go back to burn though, just a little bit, work some of the skin down here. Click on that. Work some of that and we jump back up to this little dude, even though I'm probably going to remove him anyway. All right, let me zoom out. And we'll go back to global, we'll go to burn. That's why I like to separate those. Now I can look at it from a global scale again. Soft stroke in the areas that I want. I say I'm painting. So you always see <laughs> we see painters, you know, like the Michelangelo's, uh, the sculptors, they always doing this and they walking up and like trying to look at it different angles, you know. Because I mean that's what you're doing, you're sculpting. Was, someone posted in this group the other day. That's kind of what I was telling them. Like you when you do that frequency separation too much, you know, you're re-sculpting someone's face. And if you're not careful, you don't take your time, you know, just, you know, one stroke, you'll make one, per you'll, you'll have somebody look like somebody totally different or, or have not had, or have them not look like themselves, period. So it's, um, it's a delicate, it's a delicate game when it comes to retouching. You gotta be careful, you know, and you also have to have an eye for things. Can't just jump in there doing stuff. Just going back and forth, dodging and burning. But this is looking good. This is looking good. I think I'm going to have so many shadows up here. I see right there. Dodge those in. Boom. All right, let's see what we look like. Let's see what we're looking like. I'm gonna put this micro and this global in one group. And I'm gonna name that DMB as in dodge and burn. And we just click on and off. Nice little cleanup. Y'all wanna see the before and after. Nice clean up. And I think I like that.
I think I'm gonna keep that that skin texture except maybe let me do one more cone step tool this thing right here sticking out is kind of blowing me um let me grab the clone step tool current and below and flow to you know what i just want a softer brush i'm gonna keep the flow at 100 and i'm go up to about right here and i'm gonna just come down and paint that little piece out that i want don't want Okay, what's going on? That's not the piece I want. I'm gonna copy the skin right here. There we go. And probably a little piece right here. Oh, copy that piece right there. Yeah, it's like a delay in my, uh, don't know why. Why is it doing it? Let's go back, try this one more time. Boom. Um, Oh, it's, it's probably copying the dot, the, the dodge and burn. You know what? Let me just um create a blank layer and do it like this. Boom. It's a little better, right? Copy the skin over here. I don't know why that that um a piece of skin won't move. Am I tripping? I gotta be tripping. Let me delete this layer. Home stamp everything again. Let me just go to my patch tool and see what happens. If I just circle that, let's move it. Well, that worked. It's a little more darker than I wanted, but um, let me drag it over to the left, about right there, and bring me up to the top. And that's better. And I think I might move this one too. Get that off. And a little piece right there too. And since I'm in here, let's go ahead and move that. And that one. And that one. And those two dudes. And that dude. And that dude. And that dude. And that dude. And that dude, and that dude, and these dudes, and let me go back to the other dude, and this dude, and this dark patch. I feel like the song gonna color purple. Uh, I guess when he was like, da, 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 da. What, I thought, what, what's you in Africa? I don't know. I think Mister woke up. He's about to go beat Sealy. That whole movie crazy. Look at that, way better. Skin texture still intact. Let's see before and after. Yeah, before, after, before, after, before, after. That's a good clean, clean up, man. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and drop me a quick little black and white layer and maybe turn this skin tone down about right there or maybe i don't want to control these reds i'm dropping reds down the yellows right there i know that blue in the back background okay got light bouncing off of his shirt put them highlights don't want to keep it dark i'll raise it in the back let's see keep it right that too much shadows all right and let's go to luminosity too much skin tone some drop another black and white and just drop that opacity down to maybe like nine and we'll come back up here and raise those reds a little bit is it maybe it's a skin tone oh he got more yellow in his skin okay right there I think I'm gonna open up me uh, another blank layer. Go fill that with red. The color. And I'm gonna turn that to luminosity so I can see a skin tone and hue saturation. And I'm gonna bump the saturation up so I can see what's mostly on his skin. 
which is like a yellow. And I think I'm going to create a, another, I'm gonna duplicate that same red layer. And I'm gonna turn this one to, um, let me see, I gotta mute this one, there we go. Uh, I forgot which layer is that. I think it's a hue. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's hue. That way I can see a skin tone. So if I were to do black and white and bump this up, it's about 11. And let me go back to my hue saturation so I see a skin tone. And I can see what yellows and reds I'm working with. Not too much though, so I'm at the. There we go. Interesting. You know what? I'm gonna delete those. Black and white. There we go. Raise my yellows up some. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. I'm tripping, y'all. Hold up. Let me go back. Pick up my black and white layer. Raise those yellows. And drop those reds. No, nope, reds about right. It's kind of pref your own preference on this one. I'm going to add the black and white to knock out some of the red tones. Right there. I got a check layer. Uh... That I always use. I got an action that I I, I should have went for first. I was trying to create it on my own. All right. So always create. I always create a check layer action, <clears throat> so I can check the skin tones and the luminosity and stuff like that. And I do this all the time with all my images, so I can check the the luma. So like this channel mixer, um, it lets me check the the black and white, so I can see because once. A good tip from a photographer, well, as a photographer and a retoucher, if it looks good in black and white, it looks good in anything as far as like color. So I always check it in black and white first to see how it looks. So, um, my luminance was already cool. I'm fine with that. But um, same with your threshold. You can see what's too high and what's too low if you want to work on luminosity. But right now, I want to focus on the color and the skin tone. Which is why I had this red layer set at hue. And as you can see, when I remove that black and white layer and, and add it, it takes away from the red because I want to knock out some of that saturation. I don't want it so red that some of the skin tone coming in. So I kind of want like a balance, like maybe like right here. The skin kind of looks green. Turn it down just a little more, just like that little bit. All right, and then you can add the saturation too, so you can um, actually see the red layer on. Oh, we see how red it is. His skin tone. That's the point, so you can see where all the hot spots at, and, and you know, make a decision on you know, do you want to tone down his skin tone or not? So if I take this this first black and white layer off. And I add my my skin. Um, I mean my my uh, check layer. I can see where where it's hot at on the skin. You can see it's real hot right there. See how hot red it is. Then I add this black and white layer, kind of tones it down. You don't want the skin tone too hot. I mean, most black men. That's why I say you got to look at images. And our skin, we have like red and uh, yellow hues in our skin um african-american men you know when you pull it in photoshop you can see the skin texture you know it's like all it's like an orange red or yellow i'm gonna prove it to you so th th now this red layer right here is just basically to determine the the, um, the saturation level whether it's like desaturated or oversaturated but the next one is determined you know as you see how you see how yellow it is like his skin tone has more yellow in it then more red 
it's different with everybody's skin tone. That's why I say you have to be careful when it comes to like frequency separation and stuff like that. Because, you know, everyone has different skin tones and some people are lighter than others. And if you want to crank it up, you can click on a hue saturation and crank it up some more. But you can see it's more, you know, it's kind of more on the orange side. So if I go to my um, black and white layer, Matter of fact, let me go to the first black and white layer I got. All right. Cut my group layer on. And what I'm going to do is check the skin tone how I want it. You see how it's getting up under the eye? It's like darker, brighter, darker, brighter. Same thing with the reds. Now, if I was doing like a composite, this would be important. But this is a close up. So you got to see that <laughs> you got to remove that. You can't we can't rely on it all the time. It's just a reference. All right. It's just a reference. And the only reason you, you 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 make adjustments with the red and the yellow is because you want to add contrast to the shot. I think I like that. Then I add the, the black and white layer to tone it down. So you add the contrast with the first black and the white layer, and then you tone it down with the second black and the white layer to desaturate it a little bit so it's not so hot. And where you can see the skin tone, you see the red and yellow inside of the skin, but our skin is a little more, you know, it's not that you know saturated it's a little desaturated and you can control it with the opacity i think i bring around 22 i'll add some more color in there probably around 14 that's good Let me zoom out before and after before and after nice little clean retouch it's not bad so what i'm gonna do is save this And then bring it back in the capture raw. That's usually what I do. I'll save the image and then I'll bring it right back to capture raw. And from there, I can add more. Um, I can add more detail to as far as like sharpness or if I want to add more curves to make the image pop out even a little more. So yeah man i've been here a whole hour and 30 minutes man man i sure appreciate anybody who did stop by About to open this capture one. So I'm just go up here and type in PSD for the latest PSD file. It says not found. What are you talking about, man? What do you mean not found? I gotta find an image we just worked on. Is it in here? Is this the same folder we was just in? Oh, it's still loading images. I see it at the top. It's still loading images. Let me type PSD again. Wow. I shot a lot of images. It's up in the two thousands. He must have been at the bottom. I mean, this girl his shoe is a trip.
Yep. As you can see, I got a lot of images to work on. I keep different images to work on. Keep them on deck, man. So I can always have like, I should do some retouching classes. I gotta get people on here to watch first, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, I forgot about the little fango waves. Man, 4,000 images. I shot a lot of models that day. This was in Philly back in 15, 16, 17, one of them years. There we go. All right, so now I got my image retouch. What I like to do is, um, and I'm, I'm gonna show you guys this too. I worked on I, it's um, it's finished. I got to, yeah, I, I, I'll post it. That's I, I've been waiting to show you guys that. And um, now that we have this done, I like to add a little contrast. And I might play with the levels, the luminosity. I don't want to add too much. You know what? I'm gonna keep it as is because if I want to change, I would have did it in Photoshop. You don't want to. You don't want to take it to the point where you like you just destroy all the work you just did. And I know the pop, a lot of people are going at all kind of filters and matter of fact, we crank this. It's contrast down I already see right now I don't like it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add sharpness though even though it's already sharp crank it up to probably like uh, let's see about 50 that looks pretty good and then um usually I like to go I like to play in my colors man I like to add a uh, color balance uh, nice little color band. So I like to go to my shadows and I like to lift up my shadows a little bit and I like to throw a little color in it. So I got a little blue back here. Let me see what it looks like with the blue. It's nice and cool and chill. I could go orange, but I don't like that. This blue is pretty cool. I like that. Midtones. I am going to drop that down a little bit. Oh, let me see if I raise it up. Yeah, it looks good when you raise it up like that. That's real nice. Highlights. Tone those down just a little bit. And the shadows. Let me just drop right, right there. That looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna go and drop my shadows some. Oh, maybe let's just do the blacks. Yeah, let's. There we go. You see how it looks? Yep. Let's go back. Yeah, that's not that bad. Go down to 16. Go even lower. About right there. Yeah, that looks real decent right there, man. Now I can raise my shadow just a little bit. Nah. I like that right there. And yeah, I kind of like that. Let me go back to my balance one more time and check my highlights. I might want to raise them just a little bit. I'm going to raise them. Yeah. I don't think I want to add no color on my highlights. But my shadows, do I want to raise up a little bit? Yeah, I'll raise up a little bit. Give it a nice little balance. I like that as a whole. I uh, might still want to. Let me go to my curves. Let me see if I could do something right quick.
kind of like that. I like this nice little color grade. I like that. Nice and smooth. A lot of people won't even want that. So like, let me see something. Let me clone this variant. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reset this one. See how that looks. So I can see like a comparison of the two. So I got the um, the retouch image over here, more of an orange tone and the one over here in the blue. It's kind of more stylistic, which is what I kind of like, honestly. I like this one over here on the left. Maybe I'll go back and change my, uh, so in my shadows, if I were to go a little bluer, it's getting even more stylistic, uh, purple, the green, go a little orange. We're going to do like a little fall look, I just, just orange period. That blue killing though. I like that right, right there. Nice little gray look. You know what I mean? You want to tone it down with the shadows, but I, I kind of like the shadows up like that. Looks nice. I think I'm going to roll with that. Yeah. I think I'm going to roll with that, man. I'm an hour 42 in. I'm going to get me some grub. Yeah. I think I'm going to roll with that. But I think that's it for now. Maybe I get some of y'all on the next one. That way we can work on something different. If I could get people to get in the comments and let me know what they uh, want to see. Get some different angles. See them waves. If you guys want to learn about like setups on like what I used, like reflectors, I could tell I had a reflector in this one. I could see it in his eye. Uh, board, yeah, I had a, like you said, I had a square board under his eye. A reflector and a board does the same thing. If it's all white, it's going to bounce light back up on you know into the, the face, and it's going to lighten this. It's going to lighten this whole area up. You know that that's the point of the board is to bounce more light soften up the uh the look of the face see if i were to use these compared to like say for instance like you see you see how light this his face is compared to like the image i worked on which i didn't use the board and i did both because you know you want to show your clients the difference between you know soft looks like this and um the ones with no board where you can see is more shadows on his eyes. You see it's way more shadows on his eyes because we're not using any um no bounce light to bounce light back up on his face. When you're using a uh a bounce that's white, it's gonna reflect light. If you're using one that's black, it's gonna it's gonna be used as a negative and it's gonna take away night light. It's gonna give you more shadows compared to like more of a softer look over here. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. You can really see it in this one right here. It's like super, super dark around this area. You see that? It's dark right there too. No fill. His head looking down on that, and his head looking down on that. You could tell it's like fill, no fill, fill, no fill. You know, it's a big difference. You know, when it comes to the light, and you can see it. It's very evident. So when you're shooting beauty, you know, you got to keep that in mind. You know, if you want a softer image, you know, you want to go get you some some light and bounce that back up into their face. If not, it's going to be dark and it's going to be contrasty. And if you want an edgy look, that's cool. I mean, some people like edgy looks. Nothing wrong with that. Same thing if you're doing, you know, like half body shots or something like that. You know, the next one, I might, I might show you how to extra, extract these photos and then put these people in their different areas. Which is good for like um i don't know you might want a barber who wants like a shot of him and the background his to be his you know his shop or, or something like that i forgot i shot this girl I saw a different chicks the one thing that would trip me out about down south man you don't see too many um uh cosmetologists down here shooting editorials and i don't get it but up north you know i see a lot of 
hairstylists you know who really want to um, focus on hair editorials and this girl here is beautiful she has some good looks real cute She had to do the spray and the spritz. <laughs> you take that bottle and spray that mist. All right, I'm gonna jump off. I'm gonna, I gotta get. I'll get back on uh, at another time. I appreciate y'all for watching. Um. Yeah. So y'all let me know whether y'all liked it or not. Uh, something I could change to do different. I don't know if you heard me. If you didn't hear me. Um. Uh, yeah. So appreciate y'all guys for watching and i'll probably have me a different layout uh different overlay next time i'm still learning so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm glad i picked up two extra waffles from waffle house i'm about to go destroy those joints i'm sitting here talking for an hour and 40 minutes but moving forward um oh man back to team i need a team of models that i can trust and rely on and that they're not flaking and canceling on shoots uh that's if you want to work with some people that's creative and her proms coming up someone told me about prom so anybody locally in savannah georgia area who needs prom pictures Give me a call. I actually have some prompt pictures that I shot with Miss Trish Brown. I think I'm gonna do a retouch session on that. Show you guys how we built a little set back here, and we shot her collection. I gotta post those. I gave them to her, but I think I forgot to share some on my page. I saw them yesterday when I was cleaning up my hard drive. I was like, man, I forgot about these images. So, yeah. I think I'll post some quizzes or whatnot or multiple questions in the community tab and ask you guys, like, what do you want to see and what do you want to see worked on? Maybe I could get some feedback. But until next time, I appreciate, pre -pre appreciate, appreciate you guys for watching. I'll check y'all later. Thanks.